Man United in double transfer swap claim as Michael Olai's update emerges. Latest Manchester United transfer news and rumours as Ineos prepare for the opening of the summer window on June 14 Manchester United face a busy summer as they prepare for their first transfer window under the co-ownership of Sir Jim Ratcliffe and his Ineos group. United may have yet to decide on the future of Eric Ten Hag, but the new structure put in place should mean that any potential deals will not be influenced by who the manager is. Therefore, the club's plans for who could be signed and sold should be well underway ahead of the window opening on June 14. And Gazeta dello Sport have claimed that Mason Greenwood has agreed to join Juventus after his loan spell at Hetafe in 2023-24. However, it is said that the Serie A giants cannot afford the United forward with the club rumoured to want between £35 million and £40m. It is claimed that Juve will offer talented England U21 international Samuel Illing Jr. to secure a cheaper deal for Greenwood. It is also said that winger Federico Chiesa could also be a possible player used in any potential deal. Elsewhere, the London Evening Standard are claiming that Chelsea are ready to battle United for the signature of Crystal Palace star Michael Olyse. The Blues were heavily linked with the winger last summer before he opted to sign a new deal at Palace, but the report claims that Chelsea will revisit a move this summer amid reports of a £60 million release clause, although the structure of the buyout fee could mean that he is allowed to leave for less. In other news, The Athletic report that Barcelona must find €130 million Euros before June 30 if they are to make any signings, leading to suggestions that United could revisit a deal for Frenkie de Jong. United were engaged in a protracted transfer saga in the summer of 2022 as they attempted to sign de Jong. The report claims that the Dutch midfielder could be available for €80 million, Euros, £68 million, pounds, this summer, but that fee could drop nearer to the deadline Barcelona have been set. Arsenal have also been linked with the 27-year-old Manchester United learn Jared Branthwaite transfer demand as new Everton timeline revealed. Manchester United transfer news as Everton prepare to lose Jerry Branthwaite this summer with a price being set for the England defender Everton are bracing themselves for a battle to retain Jerry Branthwaite, following his exclusion from England's European Championship squad and Manchester United's interest in securing a transfer for the valuable player before the month ends. According to the Liverpool Echo, Old Trafford executives anticipate finalising a deal for the centre-back prior to June 30, with Everton holding out for a £75 million fee. The Football Association has prohibited clubs, agents, and players from discussing transfers while selected players are on international duty this summer. If Branthwaite had been chosen, this would have posed problems, the 21-year-old has been dealing with a minor groin issue that may necessitate minor surgery. However, Gareth Southgate's decision to omit him from his 26-man squad for the Euros in Germany, after giving him his international debut against Bosnia and Herzegovina last week, paves the way for United to proceed with the deal. Everton have made it clear that they will not be pressured into selling Branthwaite at a discount, dismissing rumours of a Goodison Park fire sale this summer as unfounded. Considering the £80 million fee United paid for Harry Maguire in 2019, the £75 million Chelsea paid for Wesley Fofana in 2022, and the £77 million Manchester City paid for Josko Gvardiol, Everton believe their breakout star of the season is in the same league, reports the Liverpool Echo. If a player from Sean Dyke's team is sold, it will only be because their valuation has been met and the player wants to leave, according to club insiders. Branthwaite, who is under contract with Everton until 2027, is also thought to have a higher value due to being English and left-footed. However, like many other Premier League clubs, Everton may need to sell a high-value player before the end of the month to avoid breaching PSR rules again. The club has already received two separate points deductions for such offences this season, Manchester United legend Wayne Rooney might be making a mistake with his next career move. The former Man United and Everton striker has been a breath of fresh air in the TV studio when Wayne Rooney was a player, it was hard to envisage him carving out a career for himself in the media. It was hard to envisage him doing anything but pestering defenders and scoring goals, such was his laser-like focus on his football. Rooney didn't exactly seem media-friendly. With his skinhead, rough exterior, and heavy Scouse accent, he was the archetypal street footballer, who grew up on the tough streets of Liverpool and didn't give an inch, on or off the pitch. There is always more than meets the eye, however, and since retiring in 2021 Rooney has already reinvented himself a couple of times, 
showing the full range of his skills and personality. Who could have foreseen him as the flag bearer for Derby County as they fought off financial ruin? Or as a spokesman for soccer in the States, a bona fide MLS icon, more recently the Manchester United great has turned his hand to punditry and, once again, he's been a big hit. Uninhibited by the usual restrictions that befall regular television pundits, Rooney has waltzed into the studio and simply shown the best of himself. There were always the stories about Rooney the dressing room prankster. In his early United days, he once changed the TV channel at Carrington from the Rugby League to the X Factor simply to irritate Roy Keane. He and Darren Fletcher once cut holes in Wes Brown's much-loved trainers. The recent story Rooney told on the BBC about bumping into Micah Richards in Manchester showed that more playful side of the former United hero, exposing his old Man City adversary in hilarious fashion. I saw Micah in Wing's Chinese restaurant. I was in there with my family for a quiet meal, Rooney began with a grin. Micah came in with about 20 of his guys, they are celebrating so I said, what are you celebrating? Micah had made his 50th Premier League appearance. What's he doing? Reaching the 50-game milestone probably didn't even register to a teenage Rooney, hence his astonishment at Richard's reaction. He probably just shrugged and smiled when he reached 250 goals. And his deadpan delivery, albeit with a glint in his eye, told you exactly what you need to know about him, now, at 38, comfortable with himself and his status within the game. That was again evident when he took a rather more serious tone as he analysed a 1-0 United defeat to Arsenal on Sky Sports. Rooney said what few pundits would be brave enough to say when he questioned whether some of United's 10 injured players for that game could have actually played. Asked if United's players were fighting for their manager, Rooney said, if they are, I don't think they're showing it very well. The performances, and there are some good players in that squad, are way below par. As we look at the injuries they picked up, some of those players can play, 100%. When you have the European Championship coming up and an FA Cup final, it's easy for players to stay out of it a little bit, get back for the final and make sure they are ready for the European Championship. I've seen it myself over the years. The studio fell silent in shock. You couldn't imagine Gary Neville or Jamie Carragher, two of the best in the punditry business, by the way, saying such a thing but it was typically honest and from the heart from Rooney, akin to his old teammate Keane. There have been other such razor-sharp moments from Rooney in recent weeks, but perhaps it's all been said in a certain context, in the knowledge that Rooney wouldn't be in the pundit's chair for long. On his punditry debut for the BBC, Rooney set out his stall for the future and it wasn't great news for TV directors who, no doubt, would love to keep him shackled to the studio. After a disastrous 83-day spell as manager of Birmingham City, Rooney wanted a swift return to the dugout. I definitely want to get back into management. It was a setback what happened at Birmingham, but I'm a fighter and I want to get back into it, he said. You know as a manager, being sacked, is part of the job and you will have setbacks. It's about how you bounce back. Managing Manchester United or Everton is the aim, these big jobs are where you want to get to but it's a process. I have got to go through the steps and get myself back on track. Full marks for ambition, was a. You need a thick skin as a modern day manager and there's little doubt Rooney has that. Others would have been wounded by an experience such as the one he endured at St Andrews, remember Neville at Valencia, but, just as he was a player, Rooney remains determination personified. It wasn't as if Birmingham was the ideal place for him to cut his teeth in championship management. He was hastily brought in to replace a boss, John Eustace, who was doing well and the fans didn't approve of his appointment. One failure doesn't make him a bad manager. Now he's got that next chance he craved, after being appointed as manager of Plymouth Argyle. Rooney will compete in the championship while his former club Birmingham try and haul themselves out of League One. It's an opportunity some who know football at that level believe Rooney has been lucky to get. Not that Rooney will care. For him it's time to prove himself as a coach in the second tier and continue on that upward trajectory, like when he stunned the footballing world as a teenager at Everton, earning the big money move to United. Home Park provides the ideal location for that test and he'll hope his tenure is more akin to what he did at Derby than Birmingham. Still, his absence from the punditry circuit will be missed, especially by audiences who value honesty, insight and humour. 
Rooney might be making a mistake going down to Plymouth and back into the cauldron of the championship, but he'll always have a career in the media if he wants it. Striker signs, Alejandro Garnacho dilemma, Man United's dream attack after transfer overhaul. Man United are planning to make changes to the landscape of their squad this summer, and the attack is not immune to alteration. The start of the summer transfer window is now less than a week away, meaning Manchester United will soon be aiming to put their plans into action. Following the arrival of the Ineos group earlier this year, a hive of activity is expected to take place at Old Trafford this summer. United need to change the landscape of their first-team squad and there are expected to be plenty of changes. As reported by the Manchester Evening News back in February, United want to become more proactive in the seller's market and sales could reach double figures. United desperately need to raise funds through player sales this summer. United issued their retained list earlier this week, confirming the exits of a handful of players, but they need to cut their cloth further, all whilst trying to bring in fresh blood. The club, however, does need to remain mindful of the Premier League's profit and sustainability rules (PSR). Each area of the team is expected to come under the microscope, including the attack. With that in mind, Men's Sport has taken a close look at how many deals may need to be completed to fine-tune the forward area ahead of next term. Outgoings United have already announced that Anthony Marshall and youngster Charlie McNeil will leave the club when their contracts expire. However, the club needs to make further cuts from within its attacking department. United squad is awash with wingers, several of who are unlikely to have long-term futures at the club. Jaden Sancho and Facundo Palistri will soon officially return to Old Trafford following loan spells at Borussia Dortmund and Granada respectively, and it is expected that the club will push to offload both of them permanently. Sancho has failed to have any sort of impact since arriving at Old Trafford three years ago and there is a general level of acceptance that Palistri will never establish himself as a first-team regular. Sancho could prove difficult to shift, but Palistri, coupled with a successful Copa America with Uruguay, could be an attractive option for many. Elsewhere in the wide areas, Omari Forsan is expected to leave on a free transfer when his contract expires later this month and Shola Shortire, despite still being in talks over a new deal, also needs offloading whether he puts pen to paper or not. If he does sign a new deal, United should strongly consider shipping him out on loan. Mason Greenwood, who is still under contract, also needs moving on. United, as reported by the Manchester Evening News last month, are aiming to sell him. He has been linked with several European clubs. Fellow striker Joe Hugel would benefit from another loan spell elsewhere. Meanwhile, it can be argued that Anthony needs moving on after two uninspiring seasons at Old Trafford. However, a lack of suitors could make that an increasingly difficult challenge to achieve. Incomings. With up to eight players leaving United's attacking department one way or another this summer, United will need to bring in fresh blood, albeit they won't need to replace every departure with a new signing because the wide areas are already bloated. Starting with the right wing, links with Michael Olise, who is valued at around £60 million, have been persistent in recent months. He was superb from Crystal Palace in the most recent campaign, scoring 10 goals and registering six assists in just 19 league games. However, Anthony's presence, as well as that of Ahmad, who will be determined to prove his worth in pre-season, makes the position of signing another right-winger less clear-cut. Also, Alejandro Garnacho has established himself as a very capable operator on the right and could make that position his own. Indeed his versatility makes the situation interesting. United would prefer to keep Marcus Rashford this summer and he will have the ambition of being first choice on the left. If he nails down that position and Garnacho establishes himself, there could be an argument for United to sign another left-winger instead of a player for the right. The situation through the middle, however, is clear, United must sign a centre-forward. The exit of Marshall leaves Rasmus Hodgland as the club's only senior number 9 and it is vital the club finds some competition for him. How the attack could look If United offload eight members of their attacking ranks in total and bring in two, the forward line would be much easier to manage and keep members of it happy. The wide areas need trimming to a manageable level and the importance of bringing in another striker cannot be understated. United's new look attack after 10 deals. Right wing, Anthony, Ahmad and Garnacho. Centre forward, Hodgland and one new signing. 
left wing, Rashford and Garnacho or one new signing. Indicates Garnacho can be effective on either wing. Jaden Sancho and five Man United transfers Jose Mourinho can make to help Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Manchester United will be looking to trim their squad and lower the wage bill in the process this summer, as they look to rebuild under INEOS Manchester United's summer transfer window is as much about selling as it is about buying players this summer. Sir Jim Ratcliffe and INEOS have already identified that the wage bill at Old Trafford cannot be sustained. The Reds spend the most on player wages in the Premier League yet their performances over the last decade have not reflected this. As such, men's sport understands all, but four places are available for offers in the transfer window. Andre Onana, Alejandro Garnacho, Kobe Mainu, and Rasmus Hodgland are the only squad members who are immune from offers. Players like Bruno Fernandes, Lisandro Martinez and Diogo Dallo remain integral to the team, but should a substantial offer be submitted, United could be open to talk. However, a good chunk of the squad will be actively available this summer for a certain new manager to potentially raid to build his team. The special one Jose Mourinho returned to football management for the first time since January this weekend when he was unveiled as the new boss of Fenerbahce. The Turkish giants already have one player who is familiar to both United supporters and the Portuguese head coach in Fred. But it is likely that Mourinho will be keen to add other names to his team in the weeks to come. With such a rich career in the game, it would be understandable to assume that the 61-year-old will be looking to use all of his contacts to get players through the door in Istanbul. That being said, the Manchester Evening News has picked out six players at United who Mourinho could move for to join his team and in the process help Ratcliffe lower the wage bill. Jadon Sancho If Eric Ten Hag remains as manager of United, Sancho's future at the club is over. Mourinho was complimentary of the winger at last weekend's Champions League final but negotiations to bring him to Fenerbahce would be intense considering reports that Borussia Dortmund would be unable to sign him permanently at this stage. Victor Lindelof The Swede was one of the players Mourinho signed for United during his stint at Old Trafford and his future at the club seems in doubt. Towards the back end of last season, Lindelof began to slip down the pecking order and with the Reds looking to add a central defender to the team, he seems a prime candidate to be sold. Aaron Wan Basaka Like Lindelof, Wan Basaka is entering his final year on his United contract. Should the left-back position be resolved in the summer, the defender will have limited appearances next season considering Mourinho favourite Diogo Dallo is also preferred by Ten Hag. WAN Basaka has been linked with a move to Turkey this week with Galatasaray reportedly having an offer rejected.